Hello everybody and welcome to your 48th chapter in your Java EE7 tutorial series. In this tutorial, we'll get started on securing your web applications because your websites need security. So first of all, the internet is great. You can look up anything you want, like cat videos, but the internet has one major flaw. It's not secure. All the World Wide Web is, is a connection of computers and it does not come with built-in security. That is where Java EE helps in. The topics we'll be covering here is securing web applications, using programmatic security with web applications, and looking at a few examples of securing web applications. So getting right into it, let's see how we secure web applications. A web application security is reliant on you as a developer. The web application deployer, the guy that creates the web application, will take a look at the list you have given it. This list is written in annotations and deployment descriptors. So one way to apply security to your application is through security constraints. A security constraint is a restriction on the pages the user can or cannot access. There are three kinds of security constraints. There's the web resource collection, there's the authorization constraint and the user data constraint. The web resource collection describes a list of URLs that point to certain resources you would like to have protected. For example, let's say you have an e-commerce site like Amazon with a catalog that you would want anyone to be able to access and browse and a shopping cart area only for consumers. You could set up paths for the, your web application so that the pattern cart uh, cart slash star is uh, protected, but nothing else is protected. As you can see, your catalog is not protected, but your cart, everything inside your cart is protected. Now the user will be asked to log in if they try to access the cart section for the first time. Next, there is authorization constraints. So an authorization constraint is a constraint on a user's role. You may remember roles from the previous tutorial. Let's say that a user's role is admin. This role allows the user to access certain sites automatically, while some more important sites are blocked by an authorization form. Next, there is user data constraint. A user data constraint is useful during times like when asking for login authentication. When the login authentication method is set to basic or form, Passwords are not protected, meaning that passwords sent between a client and a server are uh, on, on an unprotected session can be viewed and intercepted by third parties. Using a user data constraint with the user authentication mechanism can alleviate this concern by either calling the message that sends the password confidential. So there are five ways to authenticate a user. First, there's the HTTP basic authentication, form-based authentication, digest authentication, client authentication, and mutual authentication. The first three are covered in this episode, while the last two, client and mutual, are, will be taking, uh, taken up in the next episode on Java EE security advanced topics. So uh, let's take a look at HTTP basic authentication. Specifying HTTP basic authentication requires that the server request a user username and password from the web client and verify that the username and password, so verifies, so sends it and verifies it and um, make sure that's valid by comparing them against a database of authorized users in the specified or default realm. If the client's username and password is correct, then it returns a request, the requested resource the client wanted. Next, there is form-based authentication. Form-based authentication allows the developer to take the control, uh, take control of the look and feel of the login authentication screens by customizing the login screen and error pages that an HTTP browser presents to the end user. Like, uh, like again, the client asks for a prote protected resource, then the server redirects your client to a login page. So this login page can be changed up to whatever the developer feels that it should look like. Then this form is submitted to the server and a security check is taken. If it's correct, then the um, client will be red redirected to, a, to the source, whichever he wanted, or to an error page if he put in something wrong. Next, there is digest authentication, which is really similar to basic authentication, except when sending and receiving the messages are always encrypted in a hash. 
This means that only the server and the client can read the messages sent. A person trying to intercept the messages will only get gibberish. So next, there is using programmatic security with web applications. Like I've said many times before, programmatic security is to be used only when declarative security does not express the level of security you may be looking for. By using programmatic security, your security can get much more granular. I'll be pointing out the programmatic security in the converter secure example, securing an enterprise bean with programmatic security in the next episode. And now let's take a look into our examples and let's now see, uh, see all our work in action in these examples. So are you ready? These examples use annotations, programmatic security, and or declarative security to demonstrate adding security to existing web applications. But first, we have to set up your system so it's able to run all these guys. So we need to configure a user database that the application can use for authenticating users. So first things first, let's make sure that our Glassfish server is running. So go into localhost 844848. And it looks like it is. And um, once again, if it's not running, go into, so copy this guy right here, go into your CMD and paste that and run that. That will start your Glassfish server. So now that you got that, let's go ahead and add an authorized user to Glassfish server. So what you got to do is go into your configurations node down here, expand the server config, go into security, realms, and click on file. So now that you're here, let's go into managing users. So let's manage the users. And now let's click new. So inside here, what you want to do is you want to enter in your user ID, put in anything like let's say one, two, three, and put in the group list. This has to be tutorial, tutorial user. So capital T capital U. There we go. And um, let's put your password as anything you want. Let's say Viprov and Viprov again. And go ahead and click OK. In my case, I'll just click cancel here. Um, in my case, I already have it over here. My user ID one, two, three and my tutorial user group list. So um, uh, make sure that you actually write down the username and password for the user you create so you don't forget it in the next uh, chapters and examples that you do later. Uh, next, let's set up our default principle to role mapping. Um, basically, what this does is you see how this group list has its own group and roles are essentially separate from groups. But in this case, what we want to do is we want to set the group list and the role to be the same. So this role is tutorial user and group list as well. So uh, once again, let's go into your configurations node and expand the server config. And let's take a look, uh, go into your security node, go into uh, let's see. Da, da, da. Select the security node. There we go. And make sure that you go ahead and click this box over here. Make sure that make sure that it's checked out and go ahead and click save. Okay, so now that you're done that let's jump into our NetBeans and let's go ahead and open our new project. Uh, our first example, the Hello2 basic authentication example. This example simply shows how basic authentication works and what it looks like. With basic, basic authentication, you will get a prompt that will ask for a username and password, and that's it. So let's go ahead and open our project and make sure that you navigate to your security in your examples and click on Hello2 basic authentication. Go ahead and open our project up. And now all you got to do is right click and click on build to go ahead and build this guy. Once it is built, let's go into our Google Chrome and type in exactly HTTPS slash slash uh, colon slash slash local host colon 8181 slash hello to basic authentication slash greeting. And it will ask you for your username and password. Go ahead and put in whatever you put for your username and whatever your password was. 
and it will give you the uh, it will it will let you go into this page right here. And you must might have seen this page before. All you uh, all you can do is go ahead and put anything you want, submit, and it tells you hello Viprov. As you can see, this page is actually different from the page before, the one without the hello Viprov. This means that whatever pages are underneath this hello to basic authentication greeting, uh, you have access to the entire thing. So now that you got that, let's go ahead and let's make sure that we clean this up. Go into your services, servers, Glastry server, and uh, this guy has started. Yep. And go into your applications and go ahead and undeploy that because we don't need him anymore. Go ahead and close this project and let's open up our new project, our Hello One form authentication. Go ahead and open this project up. Now this example explains how to use form based authentication with a JSF application with form based authentication. You can customize the login screen and error pages that are presented to the web client for authentication of the username and password. As you will see, this way of authentication is much more user friendly and just looks much nicer. So all you got to do is go ahead and you don't even need to build it. Go ahead and run this guy. And you will see that this is its own kind of page, like a kind of like an authentication page. And go ahead and type in your username and whatever your password was. Go ahead and submit it. And you got the same uh, like page that you saw before. Works the same way. And uh, in fact, what you can do is just to test it out if it actually works. Go ahead and run it again. And type in something weird like whatever and whatever. If you submit it, it will go to an error page, which says that your username or password has does not have authority or uh, does not have authorized access to this application. If you return back and actually type in the actual stuff, you will get back to your page. Now that uh, you saw that and that was pretty cool, let's go ahead and undeploy this guy and um, let's make sure that this guy is closed. And that basically does it for this tutorial, everybody. Thank you so much for get going through this securing web applications episode. And in the next episode, we will be talking about how to get started in securing your enterprise applications. And until then, I will see you in the next video.